If you want to sell vehicles in today's luxury market, you have to offer a small SUV. And Genesis will do just that with the 2022 GV70. It's arguably the most important vehicle that the company will introduce, at least until they go electric. We're here with it in person for the first time, so let's get a closer look. The GV70 rides on the same C2 platform as the G70 sports sedan, which means it should be plenty dynamic. However, it shares powertrains with the larger GV80 midsize SUV, which means it has a 300 horsepower, 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder standard, or an optional 375 horsepower, 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6, which should give this thing plenty of legs. It also comes standard with all-wheel drive, unlike any other Genesis product or any of its core competitors, the BMW X3, Mercedes GLC, or Audi Q5. Beyond any of that though, most people are gonna immediately notice its design. So let's take a closer look. You do see some familiar family cues. You've got the shield grille and the double hash headlights, which obviously tied in with the rest of the Genesis family, except for the full-size G90 sedan. Uh, you also have the beautiful Genesis wing badge. Um, this was kind of an anonymous styling feature when Genesis was a very new brand, but now it's really kind of come to become very symbolic of the brand. It looks very beautiful. When you see it, you know you're looking at a luxury product. So well done for them on that. There's a lot of details that might not come up quite uh, perfectly in video, but for example, the block out for the grill is actually set behind the grill, which makes this lovely lattice work stand out even more. It's really attractive. It makes the thing look much more composed and, and, and dynamic and interesting to look at than some of its competition, which just has fields of black plastic all over the grill. They've also added some interesting touches. Uh, for example, stemming from the Genesis badge are these fantastic strakes that run all, the entire length of the hood. It gives the hood a much more dynamic appearance. It just looks a lot more interesting and special and it just adds a little bit more visual touches to kind of surprise and delight. Same with this undercut on the front grill. That's a very unusual feature. Usually companies try and make their cars look as seamless and smooth as possible and Genesis is going the opposite direction by making this stand out a little bit, making it look a little bit more exciting. This kind of clamshell motif on the leading edge of the hood also shows up on the shut line as well, which generates into this fantastic body line that runs the entire length of the vehicle, just like it does on every other Genesis product, runs into the rear fender. However, completely unique to the GV70, the fender haunch is mounted above this body line drawing your eye to the rear and kind of pulling you backward. It makes the thing look like it's kind of hunched back and ready to go and ready to launch forward when you're at a stoplight. When looking at the GV70 from the side, the first thing you notice is how low it is. It's at least an inch shorter than most of its competitors, which just kind of adds to more of that sporting dynamic driving experience that they're trying to capture with this vehicle. While other Genesis products tend to be a little bit luxurious and comfortable and floaty, this is much more dynamic and interesting right when you look at it. We can't ignore the wheels though. On this top trim 3.5T Sport Package model, they are 21 inches trimmed in a really attractive dark chrome finish. However, they haven't abandoned their Genesis-ness. You still get this fantastic latticework motif. That motif shows up everywhere else on the car too. For example, the Sport Package Pacific rear bumper has these really interesting mesh inserts that show up on the lower um, rocker panel, which kind of draws the eye down and makes it look a little bit more planted. And that mesh extends around to the rear of the car where you see, uh, I don't think they're gonna like me for saying this, but a very Darth Vader inspired lower rear bumper. Look at these uh, gigantic bazooka cannon exhaust outlets, which are also unique to the Sport Package combined with this um, downward turning license plate surround. I can't help it. I, I see Darth Vader the whole time I'm looking at the back of this thing. That's not a bad thing. Darth is a pretty cool dude, but I, just, I can't help it. It's what I see. To that end though, Genesis has done a very good job of cleaning up the rear of this vehicle. By placing the license plate down low, they've freed up a bunch of real estate for a very attractive Genesis word mark on the rear hatch. You also get the beautiful company signature double hash taillights, and it just looks very premium, very smooth, and very unique to any other Genesis product. And then saving the best for last, the most distinctive and attractive feature of the Genesis is this C-pillar. It's very unusual to have the belt line kick down like this, like they do. It, you usually see it more of like a complete line that extends to the rear of the vehicle, but they've kind of flipped the script on us a little bit by having this lovely piece of dark chrome slip down to the belt line from the roof. It's really attractive, it's very unusual, I love it. I didn't think I would seeing it in person, but I think it's fantastic. All right, we're inside the GV70 and immediately this thing feels very, very premium. The materials quality throughout is amazing. This sport model has kind of an Alcantara suede seat inserts that are really lovely. The 
dash is trimmed in fantastic soft touch. I don't know if it's real leather, but if it's not, it does a really good convincing impression of it. It's just very nice. Everything feels good. Switches are all very damped. There are a few key differences between this and other Genesis vehicles. Uh, for example, you've got a three spoke steering wheel instead of a two spoke. I like the two spoke better just because I think it's a little funkier, but you know what? This is a sporty SUV, so we're going to let this one lie. Um, there's also a lot of elliptical um, motifs on the door panels, on the dashboard. You can kind of see it on the side here as well. And they said that that was kind of designed to look like the cross section of a World War II airplane wing. I, I think that's kind of marketing speak, but I like it anyway. They've given the GV70 the same infotainment system as the GV80. So you get a large high mounted touchscreen on the dash. You can also control it using the click wheel controller on the center console, and it's redesigned from the GV80. The GV80 kind of had a flat, flushed appearance that was really difficult to use when you're on the road. This is much more convenient and tall and easy to grab onto. However, it's the same size and shape as the shifter, so you're gonna be absentmindedly sitting in traffic one day, go to change the station, and you accidentally put yourself in reverse. The digital instrument cluster is also shared with the GV80, and it's really easy to use, very reconfigurable. You get a lot of detail and stuff like that. However, it does have the same 3D effect as the GV80. You can turn it off, thankfully, but whenever it's on, it kind of makes me nauseous when I'm driving down the road and I have to focus on four different planes of information. More impressive than the styling is just the attention to detail. For example, there's ambient lighting everywhere in places you might not expect to find it. For example, it runs the entire perimeter of this center console. The multi-dimensional carbon fiber weave is fantastic and unusual and you don't see it in any of its competition. Overall, this is just a much more exuberantly styled, interesting place to spend time. It's not nearly as stodgy as the BMW and the Mercedes, and it's just much more interesting and exciting and alluring. You really kind of just want to sit in here and touch all the buttons and play with everything and see how it all works. The Genesis GV70 hits the market sometime later this year. We don't know exactly how much it's going to cost, but we will be driving it in a few months, so be sure to check back for more.